Video number five, or maybe six, I'm not too sure anymore, of our Steel Series Extravaganza 2.0 here. As you see, we're gonna be talking about the new Steel Series speakers, the Arenas. Kicking off the Arena 3s, and then rolling into the Arena 7s in the next video. And then we will flow into some other comparisons of the headsets and the speakers. But one thing, before we dive into this review here, are these I wanna ask you guys a question. How many of you guys actually use speakers on your desk? Or use strictly headphones or headset, or maybe the speakers out of your monitor or something like that? I always have a set of speakers on my desk. Actually on my workstation, where I edit my videos and stuff like that, I actually have the Bose set. And then over on my gaming setup, I have the Razer Leviathan V2. So again, kinda of going back, talking about how I'm gonna be doing comparisons. I'm really gonna stack these up in some of those comparisons. And even right now in this video, this is not just a one-time thing I use. This is something I use daily. So I'll really be able to give you a true user's experience and my real honest thoughts on these speakers. Now, one other thing before we dive in to the arena speakers here, a quick word from our sponsor, Anchor in their Soundcore Motion Boom Plus. Now you all know I am not a back of the box spec kind of guy, but I just wanna show you this here so you can physically see everything that this thing is packing. 80 watts of speakers, customized EQ. Yeah, you can charge your device through this right here. Yeah, you aux in, 20 hours of playtime, IP67 waterproof. This thing is packing so much. But again, I'm not a back of the box spec guy. And this here, like, stick with me, okay? I know you're like, golly, a sponsor plug, right? I've been using this product nonstop. I'm actually late to the sponsor plug. I had to ask him, hey, can we push this back a week or two, you know? Because I've been using it. It's just has everything I want. It's lightweight, like it's not that heavy. It's ergonomic, you got this big handle. It's waterproof, it's just robust. The sound of this thing, holy smokes. I work on my Jeep and my motorcycles a lot in the garage right there. And again, this thing doesn't leave my side. I actually put it in my Jeep and in my motorcycles for whenever I go for a ride, if I'm down on the beach or off in the woods somewhere, just wanna throw some music on. Again, it's something that hasn't left my side because it's doing so much right. Being able to charge my devices from it right there. The simplicity of use. You can actually dive into the Anchor app and customize your own EQ. And again, backtrack to the sound, it's thumpy. It is thumpy. But you also have this bass button right on top here that you can press it, bam, and you turn it off and just get a subtle sound if that's what you're looking for. No joke, I highly, highly, if, if you're looking for a portable speaker, definitely, definitely put this on your list and check it out. And the link's right down in the description. All right, so back to our Arena 3 speakers right here. In your box, well, you get your speakers, you get a 3.5 cable, and then you get your power brick. And the power brick actually has like uh, different swappable plugs right there. So depending on your region, wherever you buy them, you have your own, bam, you click it in there. Really cool. And then as far as the wire going from speaker right to left, it's already connected. You cannot disconnect that from the speaker, bam, and then you plug it in there. But it's really nice. It's quite long, so it's gonna be able to reach across your desk there. Now, one thing, again, Again, if you all watch the unboxing of this, my first reaction was, yo, these speakers are big. So not just looking at the speakers, but let's look at the entire housing. Heck, you can go all the way down to the base if you want right there. You're looking at like right around eight inches. As far as the width right here, you know, right around five to five and a half. And then as far as depth, if we can get this fairly right, we're getting right about four and a half inches. So yes, they are kind of big. I honestly, you know, when I took them out, I was like, where am I gonna put these? But when I put them on the desk and I just kind of angled them to where I wanna push them back right there, they sat perfectly in place. They really weren't in the way. Again, guys, that's gonna be different for everybody's setup. Are they gonna be able to fit on your setups? We'll go look at those dimensions right there and you'll be able to see. I use an ultra wide monitor actually, and I still scooched them back and was able to set them up nicely, which I want you to keep that in mind for whenever we talk about sound. Now, as far as the units themselves right here, the speakers, you can't twist them. I really wish you could. I feel like I'm gonna break it because it's actually budging a little bit there, but what you can do is tilt it forward and back a little bit of angle, which 
I also did as far as the sound, but I do wish you can just twist them, but heck, it's on a circle base. You just move it left or right. Easy enough, right? Maybe I'm just being nitpicky here. And as far as the build, again, they feel very solid. They really do. I probably shouldn't have just flipped that in my hand right there. That being because you don't have any grills on this. They don't even come with them. So your speaker driver is right there. Again, me flipping it right there was a very stupid move. If I would have punctured that, speakers would have been kaputs. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Do I want to say I wish there was something covering it? I kind of do. I really kind of do. But once you set them on your desk, I mean, I guess you're really not gonna touch them, right? Now taking a look at the right speaker here, as you see, you have your volume wheel, bottoms out at the lowest, tops out at the highest right there, and then again, our stand is attached, you can't remove this. If you can catch it into camera, if we can get it into some lighting, there is our power button multi-function button. And when I say multi-function button, it's kind of weird. Well, number one, you can hold it down and pair up to Bluetooth with a little light right down here, turns blue. You actually press it again, and then it will mute the speakers, you can double press it again and it will disable the light. So it'll turn off the light. That was a good thing, right? Because I plugged them in instantly and started using them. I'm like, that light is gonna get annoying. Let me go find you some electrical tape and slap it over it. Lo and behold, when I look in the manual, how you double press it and you can turn that light off there. So very nice touch steel series on that bit. Now, looking at the back of the speakers here, let me pull it under the camera so you can see. You have headset, aux, PC, and then your power. So quite simple when you look at it, right? You're gonna go 3.5 from your speaker into your PC or into your monitor. And believe it or not, I actually test this on PlayStation 5. Now, PlayStation 5 or Xbox, they don't have 3.5 ports on the back. Maybe if you have one on the back of your TV, which mine doesn't, but if you do, you can take that, plug it in the back of your TV, and use it that way. It just watching a regular show, right? So what I did, I was, I was like, how can I actually use this though? Which is pretty cool. So I took a 3.5 from the controller, bam, plugged it into the back of the, I think it was PC slot, maybe it was aux. I forget which slot I plugged in, but anyways, I plugged it into there from the controller and you actually got your sound from that. So you can do it on the Switch, the Xbox or whatever, but yeah, you do got this 3.5 cable then coming from your controller into the speakers. Annoying. I don't know, you know, it's just like having a 3.5 headset plugged into it. You just need to find or buy a long one off Amazon or something, but really cool to have that simplicity and versatility like that. And yeah, the sound across everything that we're about to talk about was the same, again, on console or PC or even on Mac. So talking about the sound of the Arena 3s, again, four inch drivers here, and they got a freaks range of 50 to 20,000. Now I tested these, as I'm saying here, across multiple platforms. I edited a video over on my Mac, played lots of Destiny over on my PC, and dabbled with some Uncharted and stuff on the uh, PS5. And it was a really, as far as the core sound, right? Let's talk about first when I'm editing videos, right? Because I think uh, desk speakers, a lot of us are multitasking rather than just gaming with them. You're probably watching YouTube videos or something like that, right? The vocals and everything came out crystal clear. It was perfect. It was really nice. It was slightly full. It wasn't too high pitched, which is honestly the vibe I get with my bows a little bit. I get with my bows, it's almost a little bit too high pitched. These kind of rounded it out, softened it up just a little bit right there. And I really enjoyed it for editing videos. Just a real natural, true sound. Coming over to PC, right? I'm playing Destiny. I'm like, all right, well, this is going to be a whole lot of jumble, a whole lot going on right here. How's it going to handle with just straight four inch drive? You don't got like a dedicated, uh, to a tweet or anything like that. And it was actually really nice. So I'm going through there. I forget what it was, like water or fire dripping or something. And I actually heard it when I was watching. Now, from a distance, like if you got a headset on, you're not getting that stuff from a distance. You almost got to get a little closer onto it if you follow me right there. So as far as detail and clarity, like uh, competitive, nah, you're not going to want something like this for like Halo or Rainbow Six or anything like that. Of course not. But if you're looking for, again, like Destiny, something immersive or something like that, you still got that clarity and that separation of different sounds like the highs of again that liquid dripping right there you know my footsteps and then the dialogue it was all there even in a hot heated moment where you got three other guardians thrown off uh, supers at the same time it wasn't overboard it wasn't staticky it wasn't rumbly it wasn't dirty I, I was really surprised how crystal clear and full and exciting the sound was if, if that makes sense right there, it's really awesome. And again, going over to PS5 when I just plugged in a controller, same thing. It was really cool. Now, now of course, since these are controlled by the volume wheel guys, make sure whichever device you're in, you actually crank up your volume, whether if it's in PC or on your PS5 or anything like that, you actually go in there and actually crank, because it's not USB, so nothing's synced up to your device. You're running straight 3.5. So again, make sure that you're adjusting your volume in each different thing that you have active. Now, 
Yes, you can use that Sonar software if you want, if you're on PC. Of course, nothing's saving to it or anything like that. And you can tweak with it. Me, again, you all know I'm not a fan of this. So I, every bit of sound that I'm talking about here is that core quality sound out of the box. And I was pleasantly surprised. And the thing that surprised me more, because you all know that I prefer not looking at marker material. I, I didn't look at some specs or something, I'll dive in to look at it, right? But I didn't look at this until, well, I was getting ready to record this. With these guys coming in at 130 bucks, yo, I really expected them to cost more. I really did. I don't, I don't know what I thinking. You know, maybe 170, something like that. At least 150 minimum. And when I saw that price at 130, I was like, I really like this here. You know, a lot of times what we'll see from companies is they'll just drop that best one, that best line. But I love how you got the options. What do you really need? What do you want? And you can spend that much. Talking about the uh, Arena 7s we're going to be talking about. And they also got the Arena 9s, I believe they are, which I don't have. But again, it's really cool that you got the options. What kind of features and functions do you want right there? And at this, at 130 bucks, yo, I call this a win.